Hi everyone, here are three types of expectations you might be asked to compute. We're going to present the formulas for each one of these expectations and I'm going to give you an example of uh, how you'd set up the equations for each one. First I'm going to present the most general formulas for different for functions of expectations and then show you from those general formulas how you get for uh, the uh, equations for each one of these three. Okay so I've got a table here we have um, random variables discrete continuous and we've got here the first line says the expectation and g is a function of x so well, this is saying what is the expected value of a function of x well, the formula if x is discrete is the sum over x of the g of x times probability, probability mass function. And for the continuous case, it's the integral over x of g of x times the f of x, which is the pdf of x. Now, this might sound at this stage a bit alien to you, but let's get all these results down and then we'll show you how to use them with an example. Okay, so I've completed uh, the other empty cells. Now, for the expected value of a function of x and y, note that for the discrete case, we're multiplying the outcomes, g of x of y, by this thing here, which is the probability, the joint probability mass function. For the continuous case, this fxy is the joint probability density function of x and y. For this case where we're looking at something conditional on x, the formula looks the same except for the probability here, this probability mass function it now is now the conditional one. And for the continuous case, the PDF, that's the, con the conditional PDF. So if yes, if you look at all of them, Basically, they're all of the form sum, if it's discrete, it's sum of g times the PDF, where the PDF will be either straightforward, like that's the marginal one, for the case of only one, x. If you've got more than one variable, uh, you'll be using the joint P probability mass function, and if it's of the form conditional form, using the conditional probability mass function. And similarly for the continuous case, use the marginal PDF, joint PDF, or conditional PDF. Okay, now when we apply that general formula, setting G to be the identity, i.e. G does nothing to X, um, we get this fo the, these formulas, some of which you will recognize. So the expected value of X, as we know, is sum up for discrete case of X, is sum of X times probability of X and notice the other ones as well. Okay, if you're going to go on to a more advanced stats course, note these expectations do not always exist, so I've written in the brackets here whenever they exist. Now let's turn to some examples. Okay, let's consider cases when the random variables are discrete. So, if x and y are discrete, we know that if we want to calculate the expected value of x and y, it's given by this formula. All this is saying times the outcome x and y by the respective probability, the joint probability. Now here we need is an example of uh, we're given here a joint a table of joint probabilities for x and y. So to calculate this expectation, what this formula is saying, take the outcomes and multiply by the respective probabilities. So for this first cell, when x is 0, y is 0, the probability is 0.2, so we do 0 times 0 times point, and then do the same for all the remaining three cells, so the next one we could do this one, say, so we could, that would be x is 1 times y is 0 times the probability of that happening, joint probability of that happening is 0.5. Okay, so we have four terms there, and that's the way to do that kind of question. 
Next, suppose we want to calculate probable expected value of y given x is 1, so the conditional expectation. Here's the formula. So for this we need uh, the, uh, the conditional probability mass function. We need the table for that. So here's an example. And all this says is sum across the outcome times the associated probability. So this would be 0 times that plus 1 times that. Okay, so there are two examples. So note these, we can apply these once we have the, once we know from the question um, what the probabilities are. So here for the joint one, that was an example I've just made up, and here's the conditional one, which comes from here. Okay, say I want to calculate the expected value of x, and I know that for the random variable x, this is the PDF. Then in the formula, all I do is replace this f, the PDF, by the one in the question. So what I get is, is this. So I've got the integral over the region of x. That's what this, I've used the notation here to, to mean. So x goes from 0 to 2, so I set the limits for integral from 0 to 2 of x times fx, and I simply replace the fx by the fx I'm told in the question, so I've left that in brackets, and we solve. Okay, next we have a joint PDF defined over x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 1. Suppose we're asked to calculate the expected value of x, the product of x and y. This is the formula. And now just substituting for fx into here and also for the limits we have. Okay, so x goes from 0 to 1, so 0 to 1 is the limit. y also, you're told, is goes from 0 to 1, x and y. And then fx, we substitute for the one given in the question, and then that's it, and then we solve. Okay, and finally, for the continuous case, we want the expected value of y given x. Well, suppose the conditional PDF is given by this, then we substitute details here now into the formula. Now here, y goes from x to 1, so lower limit is x, upper limit is 1. So it's unlike the other cases where both of them were numbers, this x here is whatever number we're conditioning on. Well, so if x says 1, if, we're at, if the question is find the expected value of y when x is 1, would replace this x by 1, which wouldn't make sense here because they can't both be 1s. We could say what's the expected value of y given that x is 0 or 0 0.5, then we'll replace this by 0 or 0 0.5. y remains the same. PDF of y given x, substitute that in, so it's 1 minus x dy. And there you go, and we solve. So, in today's session, we've looked at three types of common types of expectations. Uh, I've given you an example on how, for each one, for how to set up the problem to solve. Those general formulas I gave you at the start are pretty important. You'd see them in other places in the course, and no doubt we'll return to those later. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm Phil, your statistics mentor.